Uh, hello there. Uh, welcome to the second part of the video on the vestibular apparatus. So in this part, I am going to discuss two very important topics. One is called as the vestibular pathway and the second one is the mechanism of stimulation of the semicircular canals. If at all you haven't seen the first part of the vestibular apparatus wherein I have discussed regarding the structure of the vestibular apparatus, please go have a look at that video and then come back and see this video. Then only you are going to understand. So let's start with the vestibular pathway. Any pathway we are discussing, always we are supposed to start from the level of the receptors. And what are the receptors here? As I have already discussed in the part one, the receptors are the hair cells. And we all know that from the hair cells, lot of afferent fibers are going to arise. These afferent fibers are nothing but they are the bipolar neurons. So if they are the bipolar neurons, the cell bodies of these neurons will be situated in the center. Okay. And from the cell bodies will arise the axons. These axons are the one which are going to form the vestibular division of the eighth cranial nerve. Vestibular division of the eighth cranial nerve is formed by these. And the part where the cell bodies are located, that part will be called as the vestibular ganglion or that is also called as the scarpa's ganglion. Okay, we call it vestibular ganglion or the scarpa's ganglion. Remember that these are still the first order neurons. And few of these first order neurons which form the vestibular division of the eighth cranial nerve, now they are going to divide into two parts. One part is what is called as an ascending part and the remaining part is what is called as a descending part. Now these ascending nerve fibers of the vestibular division of the eighth cranial nerve, these are nothing but the axons which are arising from these bipolar neurons. The ascending ones, these are the ascending ones they terminate directly where where are they going to terminate they are going to terminate directly in the cerebellum okay so which part of the cerebellum do they terminate they are going to terminate specifically in the vestibulo cerebellum or anatomically the vestibulo cerebellum is also called as the flocculonodular lobe we know this now, what happens to these descending nerve fibers of the vestibular division of the 8th cranial nerve? The descending nerve fibers, they are going to all terminate in a nucleus and the name of that nucleus is also the vestibular nucleus that is called as the vestibular nucleus. So they are going to enter into the brain stem and they are going to terminate in the vestibular nucleus. Now the second order neurons which are arising from the vestibular nucleus they are going to terminate in so many different areas of the central nervous system. So that is what we are going to study now. Now few of the fibers or these are also called as the efferent fibers or the second order neurons Few of the fibers which are arising from the vestibular nucleus, they terminate also in the cerebellum, again in the same part of the cerebellum which is the vestibulo cerebellum. And these fibers are what are called as the vestibulo cerebellar tract. The vestibulo cerebellar tract, which is very much important in the maintenance of the posture. Few of the fibers arising from the vestibular nucleus, they enter into the medial longitudinal fasciculus and they are going to terminate at the level of the third, the fourth and the sixth cranial nerve nucleus. Okay, they are going to terminate at the level of the third, fourth and the sixth cranial nerve nucleus and this is what is called as the vestibulo ocular tract and this vestibulo ocular tract which is terminating in third, fourth and the sixth cranial nerve nucleus, it is concerned with the function of what is called as the vestibulo ocular reflex. So what is this vestibulo ocular reflex is that this vestibulo ocular reflex is going to help us in fixation of image on the retina even when the head is moving. So if I want to fix an image on the retina when I'm moving the head let's say onto the right side at that point of time my eyeballs keep moving in the opposite direction that is to the left side. That is what is called as a vestibulo ocular reflex. Few of the fibers 
arising from the vestibular nucleus they are going to relay in the thalamus we all know that the thalamus acts like a relay station and which nucleus they are going to relay in the ventro posterior nucleus and from here these fibers they pass on to the cerebral cortex they are going to pass to the cerebral cortex so these are what is called as the vestibulothalamocortical fibers vestibulothalamocortical fibers very important next that is few of the fibers coming out of the vestibular nucleus now they are going to terminate at the level of the spinal cord they terminate at the level of the spinal cord and where exactly they are going to terminate in the spinal cord they are going to terminate at the level of the alpha motor neurons extremely important so these alpha motor neurons are the one which are helping in maintenance of the tone of which muscles of the proximal muscles as well as the axial muscles and hence this very important pathway is helping in maintenance of the posture and this is what is called as the vestibulospinal tract this is what is called as a vestibulospinal tract now apart from these terminations there are also terminations which are occurring at the level of the red nucleus okay this is called as a vestibulorubral tract and from the red nucleus again fibers they enter into the cortex and few of the fibers they also terminate at the level of the reticular nucleus and from here also the fibers move to the cortex this is what is called as the vestibuloreticular tract and this is what is called as the vestibulorubral tract so now let's summarize as to where all the fibers are going to terminate first termination is occurring at the level of the cerebellum okay that is via the vestibulo cerebellar tract second is occurring at the level of the third fourth and sixth cranial nerve nucleus helping in the maintenance of the vestibulo ocular reflex next termination is occurring at the level of the thalamus and from the thalamus to the cerebral cortex this is called as a vestibulothalamocortical fibers next important termination is occurring at the level of the spinal cord to be more specific it is occurring at the level of the alpha motor neurons via the vestibulospinal tract very important helps in the maintenance of the posture next termination occurs at the level of the red nucleus and also at the level of the reticular nucleus so this is what is vestibular pathway is all about and also remember that fibers arising from the cerebellum they are also coming back to the vestibular nucleus so these are also fibers so it's a, like a two way traffic fibers arising from the vestibular nucleus they terminate in the cerebellum and fibers arising from the cerebellum they are also going to terminate at the level of the vestibular nucleus fine so this is the vestibular pathway next let's understand the mechanism of stimulation of the semicircular canals so what does the semicircular canal detect as i have already told you in my first video semicircular canals which contain the crista ampullaris in the ampulla they are going to detect what is called as the angular acceleration or also called as the rotational acceleration so they are going to detect any kind of movement of the head because we have three semicircular canals which are placed at right angles to each other so any kind of the head movement is going to be detected and hence they are going to help us in maintenance of what is called as a dynamic equilibrium so now here this is the right sided semicircular canal and this is a left sided semicircular canal right now there is no movement of the head is occurring so that's why the number of impulses generated on both the right side and left side is very much minimal now let's say the head begins to move towards the right direction so when the head begins to move towards the right direction what is going to happen to the direction of the movement of the semicircular canal the entire semicircular canal is also going to move in the right direction or we can also say it is going to move in the clockwise direction okay so this entire canal is moving in the clockwise direction but because of the inertia the endolymph which is present inside the semicircular canal at the beginning of the movement very important at the beginning of the movement okay 
the endolymph is not moving endolymph lags behind so the semicircular canals are moving but the endolymph is not moving that means the endolymph is left behind in another words if i have to say the semicircular canal is moving in the clockwise direction and the endolymph will be moving in the anti clockwise direction so when the endolymph moves in the opposite direction to the movement of the semicircular canals this endolymph is going and stimulating the crista ampullaris and here we are seeing that the stereocilia are moving in the direction of the kinocilium that is going to cause depolarization and hence that is going to cause stimulation of the right semicircular canal but what is happening on to the left semicircular canal again the same thing is going to happen see the semicircular canal is moving in this direction but the endolymph will be moving in opposite direction to that of the semicircular canal so when the endolymph moves in the opposite direction what is going to happen to the stereocilia they are going to move away from the kinocilium that causes hyperpolarization and hence the number of impulses generated in the left semicircular canals is less so at the beginning of the movement the right sided semicircular canal is stimulated if the if the head is moving on to the right side and the left semicircular canal is inhibited this is what is going to happen but let's see now what happens with the continued movement the movement is continued at a constant speed so when the movement continues at the constant speed speed now the endolymph also begins to move so that means the direction of the movement of the semicircular canal and the direction of the movement of the endolymph is now in the same direction both are moving in the same direction the same thing is also going to happen on the left side so when that happens again there is no stimulation so ampulla during continuous movement is not stimulated now what is going to happen during cessation of the movement that is when the movement is going to stop so when the movement is going to stop exactly opposite is happening as it happened during the beginning of the movement so the movement has stopped the semicircular canal has stopped now because of the inertia the endolymph is going to keep on moving for some more time so because of the continuous movement of the endolymph even though there is stoppage of the movement of the semicircular canal here what is going to happen is the stereocilia are going to move away from the kinocilium so that's why the right sided semicircular canal is inhibited and opposite of that is happening on the left side so the left sided semicircular canal is going to get stimulated so when the movement stops on the right side the semicircular canal is inhibited and on the left side the semicircular canal is stimulated that means the semicircular canals whenever there is beginning of the movement there is some kind of a stimulation during continuous movement there is no stimulation and when the movement stops again there is some kind of a stimulation depending upon whether the movement is occurring on the right side or on the left side i hope you have understood this topic of mechanism of stimulation of the semicircular canals as well as the vestibular pathway if that's the case please do like this video and subscribe to my channel and share this video among your friends thanks a lot for listening